Some weeks back, I posted the video of the dress display on the screen on my YouTube shot. Some people requested I make a tutorial on it. So, this is the outcome of what I recreated. Please make sure you watch to the end. And please don't skip any part because I'll be explaining in details on how to cut and sew this dress. And also how you can sew for different body sizes. If this is your first time coming across to my channel, you are welcome. Please make sure you subscribe and like my video. Okay, I have this brocade fabric that I'll be using for this tutorial. I have two yards here. You can use damask or any fabric of your chest, but for me, this is what I can lay my hands on. And for this one, I don't really know what I can call it. According to the woman I bought it from, she said it's a um, bell damask, and I bought one and a half yards of it. I also have my door face satin that i'll be using for the lining okay i have my basic bodice block here if you don't know how to get all these lines i marked here i will put a link on my description box so the first thing i will do now is to mark my neck width i took four inches for my neck width and my neck depth i mark four inches if you are a slim person please use three inches for the width and three inches for the depth so i will make a square now so that i can curve my neckline i'll just curve it the way you see me doing you can use your free hand or use your bottom master to curve your line so i'll clean up this line now so that you won't get confused after cleaning it off the next thing i'll be marking now is my nipple to nipple measurement i use eight inches for my nipple to nipple measurement but because my fabric will be unfold i divided it by two so I have four inch I mark four inches so I really straight to the bust point line. So the next thing I will do now is to measure what I have on my armhole. So I'll get the midpoint. This is because I'm making armhole creases that boost here. So I will connect it to the nipple point. So I came up by half inch from my nipple point line to connect it. I took 1.5 inches for the side front and the center front i took 0.75 making it 2.5 in total so i will come down by one inch from my boss point and i will curve it the way you see me doing i also do the same thing on this side this is what you have when you're done so on the armhole i will mark half half inch on the both side to tighten the armhole area i'll come up by half inch from the bust point line and i will connect it just watch carefully what i'm doing you get it right okay so the next thing i'll do now is to replace the one inch i took for my dart intake on the ample so i will reconnect it to the side this is very important if you don't do this you run shortage of fabric after that i will now mark my yoke I use 7 inches for the width of the yoke. That's how wide I want the yoke to be. If you're a slim person, you can use 6 inches. So, the next thing now is to come down by 11 inches for the deep sweetheart neckline. You can go deeper depending on how you want it to be. I will now cover my deep sweetheart neck. You cut the sweetheart neckline before adding the keyhole. So for the keyhole, I took 1.5 inches from the neck width. You can make it 2 inches if you want. And for the depth of the keyhole, I used 5 inches. This 5 inches is not standard. You can make it 6 inches or 7 inches depending on what you want. From the outcome of my own dress, you can decide on what to use. So do you see how I curve the keyhole? I want the opening to be one and a half inches. So I will measure what I have here. As you can see, it's not up to one and a half. I will increase it. I will mark quarter inch on the other side. So I will curve it. I'll curve it the way you see me doing. So I want the hole to be 1.5 inches in total. That's what I want. So I will confirm. Can you see it's one and a half inches now? So that's how you will know. Next thing I'll be doing now is to cut it out. I'll trim it. I'll start from my neckline now and cut. 
If this is your first time coming across to my channel, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on your notification bell. Okay, I forgot something here. I didn't extend this line downwards, so I mark one inch on the side front and half inch on the center front, and I rule it straight down. So after that, I will continue my cutting. I'm cutting out the keyhole now. Do you see what I have? So I will now cut out my yoke. Can you see where my my keyhole stopped? I will indicate it so that if I'm cutting it on my fabric, I will not cheat. So I will write it cut on fold. This is my front yoke. I will write it also. After cutting it out, I will set it aside so that I can work on the back part. So this is my back part. I mark out my zipper allowance of 1.5 inches. My vertical lines and I place my horizontal measurement also. So for the neck width, I mark four inches. For the neck depth, I mark two inches. That's for the back part. So I will also curve my neck line the way you see me doing. So after that, I will clean up this square I mark here. For the back shoulder slant, I mark half inch. For the front, I took one inch for the shoulder slope, so I will get the midpoint. I'll come in by half inch. For the front, I mark 0 0.75 also, so I connect it the way you see me doing, and I will curve my armhole. So to give my dress that fitted shape on the back part, I'll be removing the zipper bulge, so I mark 0 0.75 for the zipper bulge. And I will slant it towards the chest line the way you see me doing. So after that, I will cut it out. The next thing now is to mark my nipple to nipple measurement. Mark four inches, and I will rule it straight to the bust point. So I will take half half inch on the both side for the dart intake. So I will now slant it this way. I believe that most of us can do this step so if you don't know how to grab a basic bodice i have a detailed tutorial on how to do that on my channel please do check it out so for the back yoke i marked 14 inches for the depth so for the width of the yoke i marked 7 inches same thing i mark on the front part so from there now i will curve my neckline this way you extend the neckline to the zipper allowance. So I will use my free hand now to shape it. You can use your pattern master to get the curve if you want. So you curve it this way. You can make the depth of the yoke to be 15 or even up to your half length. But for me, I use 14 inches. So I'll curve it. Can you see how I curve the neckline? Just follow what I'm doing. you get it right. So after drawing the neck shape for the yoke, the next thing I'll be doing now is to mark the back keyhole. So I mark 7 inches for the depth. And from the neck width, I mark 1.5 inches. The same thing I did on the front part. And I'll curve it the way you see me doing. When you are curving it, make sure it's like C. Can you see what I'm doing? Like deep C, C curve. So I have 1.5 inches for the keyhole. The same thing I, I mark for the front keyhole. I will shape the keyhole very well. Can you see what I'm doing? So I don't want my back part to have a dart. So I'll be closing this dart off. I'll be doing that later. But I'll just notch it so that I will not forget. So after notching it, the next thing I will do now is to cut it out. After cutting it out, I will also indicate where my keyhole stop for the back. So the next thing now is to transfer it to my fabric. I will start with the center front. The center front will be on fold. So I will pin it down. So I will add my half half inch. I will add my sewing allowance, half inch sewing allowance on this part also. So this is where my keyhole stopped. I indicated it. For the armhole area, I did not add any sewing allowance. So I will cut it out 
on where my keyhole stopped, I will notch it. Very important, notch it to indicate. After cutting it, I'll, I'll also cut the same thing for my line. This is what I have for the center front. Can you see? So I will cut the remaining parts. Okay, for the back that, I will slash it open. After slashing it open, I will close it up. I will use my masking tape now to hold it. I don't want my back part to have a dart. So that's what you will do to give you that perfect fitting at the back. So I've added my sewing allowance. I didn't know my camera was not recording. I added half inch for the siphon. I added 2.5 inches for size seam sewing allowance. For this side back, I added 1.5 inches because there's no dart. So add 1.5 inches. So I've already cut it out. So I will place it on my lining fabric now to cut exactly what I have here. For the front you you put your fabric on fold. So I use my pin to secure it and I add half inch on the next side. Add half inch on the yoke on the keyhole side. Just add half inch around. Can you see what I have? I'll also do the same thing on the back part. I'll add half inch round for the back part. Where are your keyhole stop? Please indicate it. Notch it on the yoke also. So that when you're sewing it, you won't find it difficult. Alright? So I'll go ahead and cut it out. After cutting it out, I'll cut another one for the lining. I want to use the same fabric for the lining. If you are watched up to this point and you find my video interesting, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Can you see the back part? This is what you will have when you are done cutting it out. I will also knot the keyhole for the back. So I have already cut out my skate part. I believe that most of us here can cut a basic skate. If, if you don't know how to cut a basic skate, I have several tutorials on how to do that. It's on my channel. To determine the full length of the gown, you take up the half length, which is 17 inches on my own case. I use 15 inches for the full length. So I've cut my lining also. I've also gone ahead to iron my interface on my main fabric and on my lining. I use thick estate for my main fabric. Please, if you don't have thick estate, double your estate so that it will give it a little strength. I also iron my uh, soft gum stay on the skirt part for my pattern i use this medium weight foam so i place my side front this way and i come up by seven inches from my under bust i will cut it off after cutting it off i will shape it i mark five inches to shape it so i have a tutorial on how to cut and pad a present that bust here is on my channel also please do ways to check it out so i will trim up this part so that it won't obstruct the armhole when i'm facing the sleeve so i would also do the same thing for the other side after that i will cut the center front if you like you can do full pattern for the center front for me i won't be doing full pattern that's why i'm taking my time to show you what i did so from the under bust, I also mark 7 inches for the length of the foam. After cutting it out, the next thing I will do now is to shape it. I will shape it this way. So I will measure 4 inches. That's what I use for the cup. So I will shape it the way you see me doing. Like C curve. Can you see what I'm doing? I'll cut it up now for you to see what I have. I will also cut this side. This is what you have. So you have half inch now. This this half inch is what you'll be using to join your yoke. This is four inches. I also have four inches on this side. This is my sewing allowance. I will notch it on this part so that I will not get confused. For my lining. I use full pattern on the center front. I use my wadding to iron on my lining. So you curve it. If you also want to do full pattern on the main fabric, you can as well do full pattern. So for the foam, I'll use my emming gum now to stick it on the main fabric. 
So I'll iron it out. After ironing it, this is what you have. The next thing now is to join it. I will also join my lining. I have a detailed tutorial on how to cut and sew a princess that bust here. So I've finished joining it. I will notch the under bust both for the lining and for the main fabric. After notching it, I'll push it out for you to see. Can you see what I have? So I will use my breast bone now to iron it out. Open press and iron properly. You can use your steam iron. If you don't have steam iron, sprinkle water on it and iron it out. Can you see what I have on the main fabric and on the lining? Please, I will advise before you fix your yoke, make sure you iron interface on it. Ironing interface on it will make the neck area to look firm. So when I was cutting my main fabric, I notched the part where the keyhole stopped. So from there, I will start fixing my yoke. For this middle, I will make a little notch so that I will get the deep V very well. So use your pin to secure it. Pin it up to where the keyhole stopped. And I will go to my sewing machine and sew. I will sew this part now and come back and show you the next thing to do. So I've sewn it. Can you see? So I'll remove my pins now. After removing my pins, I will flip it to the other side. Just follow what I'm doing. You get it right. I will turn it this way for you to see. I also pin it down. You can join your deep V the way you used to join it, but for me, this is how I normally join it. So I also do the same thing for the lining. This is the outcome of it. Can you see? It came out very well. I also do the same thing for my lining. Next thing now is to confirm the length of the keyhole. I use 5 inches. I will also confirm what I have for the lining. Make sure that the length of the keyhole for the lining and the main fabric is the same. Can you see how I sew the keyhole side? You curve it like this. This is how you sew it. So I will now do the same thing for the back part. I will sew my back yoke. I will sew it lining separately, main fabric separately. So pin it down. After sewing it, this is what you have. Always work with your pins. Pin it down before you sew. This is what I have when I was done. I will also confirm the keyhole whether it's the same depth that I took initially. So the next thing I will be doing now is to join the upper part with the lower part. I will join my lining separately and I will join my main fabric separately. After joining it, I open press the waistline and the yoke part and iron it properly so that I can have a neat finishing. Can you see what I have? The next thing now is to use my lining to turn the front part. I will also turn the back part. I will first of all sew the hem. After sewing the hem, I will turn it this way. I'm trying to fold the hem of the gown. Arrange it very well, making sure that the half length for the lining and the half length for the main fabric is matching. So I will pin it down. Can you see what I'm doing? After pinning it down, I'll go to my sewing machine and sew the neckline. After sewing the neckline, I will sew the keyhole. This is how I sew it. I also do the same thing for the back parts. After sewing it, I sew the both side with quarter inch. So the next thing now is to notch it, notch the neckline for the back and front. After that, I will bring it out from my armhole. I'll push it out both for the front and back. You can use your scissors to bring out the pointy parts. Please, if you come across any advertisement on this video, don't skip the advertisement. Make sure you watch it just to support my channel. Thank you. So, can you see what I have? I've gone ahead to fix my zipper. This is the outcome of it. Can you see? So the next thing I'll be doing now is to join the front and back together. I will align the shoulder and I'll sew with half inch. You can turn this part this way. And I will be sewing it with half inch like this. You can use your pin to hold it. 
after sewing the shoulder i will use my weaving machine and weave it after that i will shape the both side with my sewing allowance that i added so i will do it now and come back and show you can you see what i have when i was done the next thing now is to confirm my round and hole you measure it if it's not up to your round and hole you can trim it off I will measure to confirm whether it's up to my round and hole. For the sleeve part, I've gone ahead to fold my fabric into two. So I will determine how puffy I want the sleeve to be. For me, I came down by 4.5 inches. You can make it 5 inches if you want. So I will rule it straight down. So from this line is where I will start placing my measurement. I will first of all mark my calf height, which is 3.5 inches. I'll mark the sleeve length which is 7 inches and I'll add 1.5 inches for sewing allowance. I'll roll it straight down. On the line where I mark my cap tie, I will mark half of my round and hole and I will add extra 4 inches there. I'll be pleating it a little, that's why I added extra 4 inches. So I'll mark my round sleeve and I'll add 1.5 inches for sewing allowance. I'll connect it to the cap height. From the cap height, I will now draw my sleeve head just draw it like an inverted s so from there i will trim it off i will notch my sleeve head that's where my pleating will stop so i will now cut the remaining out after cutting it out i will also place it on my lining and cut out the same thing so i reduce my lining by 1.5 inches because i want the hem to have a little folding before i gathered it i will turn the hem with the lining so I will sew it. After sewing it, I will turn it this way and I will sew the both sides with half inch. After sewing it, I will turn it to the right side. Can you see? I will arrange it very well and I will stitch it down. After stitching it down, I will pleat it. I will start from where I notched. After gathering it, this is what you have. I've already shaped the sleeve. I will now fix it. If you don't know how to fix this, I have a detailed tutorial on how to do that. Thanks for watching.